The Obama administration has a new policy idea for dealing with the situation and the recent violence in Iraq. Secretary of State John Kerry arrived in Baghdad today and said that the Prime Minister of Iraq, Maliki, uh, agreed to new elections on July 1st. And the idea is to give more power in the government to the Sunnis in the hopes that that will quell the aggression of ISIS, which is, of course, a jihadist group, the group that's more extreme than Al-Qaeda. I mean, even Al-Qaeda disavowed them and said, yeah, you've killed too many Muslim women and children. We don't even agree with you. So for those of you who don't know, Maliki, who again is the prime minister of Iraq right now, is a Shiite, okay? Shiites are a minority in Iraq, and the majority population is Sunni, and they're underrepresented in the current government. So ISIS, of course, they are Sunni jihadists, and they're taking over Iraq. I mean, they took uh, Mosul recently. They've even advanced from there. They're, you know, moving in on Baghdad as uh, time has gone by here within the past week or so. And uh, they're slaughtering people as we speak. So again, the goal is you have new elections, and that'll hopefully give the Sunnis a better representation. They hope that will quell the uh, further push of ISIS. And they also sent about 300 Green Berets to train Iraqi defense forces. So uh, let's break this down a little bit. Is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? Why? Why not? I don't like it. I don't think it's a good idea for, for multiple reasons. And I think both prongs of the policy, it's a bad idea in both respects. So the first reason is ISIS is the most brazen terrorist group on the planet, according to reports. Okay. You think getting some more moderate Sunnis in government is going to quell their violence and quell their push? No, they're not into negotiating. Talk to the people that they were beheading. Oh, right, you can't. They're dead. They, have, they don't have a head anymore. They'll tell you, these guys, what they want to do is set up an Islamic state. Okay? By getting a few more Sunnis in government, you're not going to make them stop advancing, and you're not going to make, you know, other moderate Sunnis pick up weapons to fight against uh, ISIS. That's just not going to happen. In fact, the people who are most protecting Baghdad right now and protecting Iraq are the Shiites from Iran. You know, the Ayatollah made a call and said, look, everybody uh, in the country who wants to protect the homeland, you better pick up a gun and, and go to Iraq right now and you better stop these guys from advancing, the ISIS fighters. So that's just a naive idea that that will change anything. It won't change anything. And the other thing is the 300 Green Berets, what are they going to do? They can't create the will to fight in the population, in the defense forces of Iraq. You have to remember, there were reports that the Iraq defense forces, which, by the way, we trained before and armed before, they dropped their weapons and ran when ISIS was advancing. So what are you going to do? You're going to go back there and train them again for what? What's going to happen? They're still going to run away. Because, look, if they wanted to defeat ISIS, here's what they could have done. They could have defeated ISIS. Now, why do I say that and why am I so sure? Because there's thousands of those fighters, thousands of Iraqi defense fighters, and there's only a few hundred ISIS members. But they're pillaging and raping and killing their way all through Iraq right now, and the defense forces are running away. Why? Because they don't care to protect this government that exists. Which, of course, leads to uh, the possible conclusions that are actually there. I, I don't want to call them solutions, because I don't think they're solutions, because it's going to be fucked no matter what happens. But here's what U.S. policy should be. I'm obviously most in favor of just a non-interventionist policy. Bill Maher was talking about this on his show on Friday, how he said, look, there's been a war going on between the Sunnis and the Shiites for, for generations. The idea that a foreign power can meddle in the affairs a little bit and tweak around the edges and all of a sudden, you know, stop the violence from escalating. That's a silly idea. Even if you do it, you're going to do it temporarily. You know, just like arguably what happened when we were there, uh, you know, post-2006 or so. 
So what are you going to do? You going to okay, let's say we go back in and quell the violence for another 6 years. Well, then when we leave again, unless we stay there forever, what's going to happen? They're going to go right back at it. So it appears as if the the uncomfortable conclusion which is inevitable at this point is they're going to have at it either way and I mean what business of it uh, of America's is it to be in the middle of it? I mean nobody in Denmark right now is asking themselves, should we go get the middle of a civil war in the Middle East? Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah, I think we should do that. Is anybody in Greenland having that conversation? No, but of course when you're uh in imperialistic power, you naively think, well, we can control the world and we can do everything right and we can get what we want. No, you can't. No empire ever throughout history has ever successfully managed the world. They all collapse after a certain amount of time and the U.S. is going down the same path and they're too naive to see it right now. So that's my favorite policy is just this idea of non-intervention. But then the second thing is, look, I get it if you want to go through NATO. Like if if we or somebody else goes to NATO and they come up with some sort of a solution where I don't know exactly how NATO would quell the situation, but that's not my job to know how NATO would quell the situation. That's their job to figure it out. So if NATO wanted to get involved and we wanted to go about it through the right uh, international channels, fine. I got no problem with that. N no big deal. That's That's policy number two is we don't get involved, but if you send in some armed people from NATO or whatever the case is, okay, I, I'm fine with that. That's not going to keep me up at night. And the third thing is, look, if you really want to get hawkish with the situation, which I don't, but the, the most hawkish we could go that's still an acceptable situation is you go to Congress, Congress will easily pass this, you say, look, we're just doing a week-long uh, drone campaign, in and out, one, two, three, we have a hard deadline of a week, we already know where the targets are because we have the intelligence on it. Again, we got to remember, uh, what is it, ISIS forces, it's like 900 people or something that's pillaging throughout the entire country now. So you go in there, boom, boom, take them out with a big fleet of uh, drones, and then you call it a day. You come home. That's it. Just a week-long campaign. Now, again, I'm not in favor of that. Let me be clear. But if I'm laying out different possible uh, policy ideas for the situation, you have the non-intervention way, you have the NATO way, and then that's the most hawkish we could go where the American people would still be able to stomach it even though they don't agree with that, you know? But this, like, middle-of-the-road approach is a really stupid idea. The idea that, well, uh, let's just have new elections and maybe ISIS will stop. They're not going to fucking stop? Do you know nothing about jihadists? What are you, crazy? So that's not going to do anything. And, oh, send 300 Green Berets. Why? What's going to happen? They're training people who don't want to fight anyway.